Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Release video. This is a video where I share ideas for using the My Monthly Hero Release add-ons. Today we're going to be creating a couple of cards with matching envelopes using February 2023 My Monthly Hero add-ons for beautiful butterfly backgrounds. This video is going to share tips and tricks for ink layering, stamping, and distressing with spray, your backgrounds, as well as stamping and ink blending, the butterflies that we're going to add on top for embellishment, and then adding that personalized touch with a coordinating envelope and some stamping inside. We're going to start with four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels of Nina 110 pound weight smooth white cardstock ink blending a trio trio of Hero Arts Hero Hues reactive inks on each panel. The first background is going to be Fruit Punch, Cream Sickle, and Lemon Drop. I love these colors together and I think it's going to create a very bright and happy background. I'm going to just kind of keep working the colors until I get a very seamless blend. I am working on a Simon Says Stamp glass mat that I can easily clean in between ink blending with a little uh, water cleaning solution or rubbing alcohol. For the second background, I'm going to be using Pool Party, Blue Raspberry, and Grape Slush. The names are just so much fun. And these Hero Hues Reactive Inks are some of my very favorites uh, or very favorite products from Hero Arts. They've been out for a few years now and they just continue to be some of my most often used inks. I'm again going to blend my colors seamlessly. I did find I felt like I had to blend a little bit more for this second background than I did for the first background, um, probably because I did pick the lighter aqua shade. You could choose a, um, the other, why is the name escaping me? But you could choose a little bit darker color or I could have chose Splash instead of Blue Raspberry and it might have been a little easier, but I really do think the blend effect is worth it. In this particular card, I ended up really, really loving this. I was a little on the fence, <laughs> but it ended up being absolutely beautiful. Now, once I am completely done ink blending my backgrounds, I want to add some texture. And one of my favorite products from this February 2023 release is the background texture strips. If you have followed me for any length of time, you know that I absolutely adore a text background over almost any type of card that I'm doing, um, any interesting type background, create your own pattern paper, I love a text. Well, what's awesome about this is this particular stamp set is a script style text, which I'm using here today, uh, more of a dictionary type text. There's more, um, I'd call it a distressed rectangle, and then music notes. We're gonna use the script and the music notes for our background. And I'm using those same colors of Hero Hues Reactive inks. And I'm using acrylic blocks actually to stamp all over the background. And you'll notice I'm kind of offsetting this. There's a lot of different ways to use this background text, the background text or the backgrounds in this stamp set. But what I'm doing is doing kind of a tone on tone effect and just offsetting my script then I'm going to take another acrylic block and we're going to take the music note background and we're going to tone on tone again, but fill in some of those areas. What we're doing is building kind of more of what I would consider a mixed media type ish background that has a lot of different elements. So we've got some ink blending and now we've got some text and we have some music notes and it's all going to work together to create a very interesting background. Now these backgrounds are beautiful like this or consider die cutting from them. If you've got a butterfly die 
or a frame die, or you want to trim this down and create a border, it would be absolutely stunning. We're going to stamp over the whole thing with our butterfly background. There is a new bold print called Fluttering Butterflies, and we're going to create a really cool effect with that. But this background is stunning just as is. We're going to do the exact same thing with our other colorway. Um, they're going to both look maybe a slightly different simply because I am using an acrylic block, which I hardly ever do instead of using my Misty, but it's going to turn out awesome. And again, just doing a tone on tone, it will be very light. It's going to be a subtle effect, but when you look at the finished card and you're looking at the background, you're going to see these pops of text and pops of music notes just kind of popping out from the bold black of the background and it looks amazing. Uh, to my eye, I love that little bit of something going on that isn't like in your face, bold, but it isn't super plain either. I am a huge fan of creating some sort of tone on tone interest for the backgrounds of my cards. Look how pretty those are. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a Misty and I have a sticky mat already prepped in my Misty and I'm going to position it slightly down kind of about, I would say what, a, more than a quarter of an inch. It's not really quite a half, I don't think. Maybe it's about a half inch from each side. And then I'm going to position the Fluttering Butterflies Bold Print in my Misty, I've removed the foam insert since this is a cling stamp, and I am using some black archival ink to stamp over the background. My goal with my ink choice is something very dark, very that will cover up the background basically. I don't want the background peeking through. So that was my first stamping impression. Also, that was my first time ever stamping this particular image most stamps need a little prep. So I am going to end up stamping this, I believe, three times. I did grab my stamp tool out um, to really get a good press. And you can see there's still a few light areas. The benefit of using the sticky mat in the Misty and using the Misty in general is you can stamp it as many times as you need to. So pretty. Let's go ahead and grab our second background and do the exact same thing. So again, I'm going to stamp this up with the black archival ink or ink this up with the black archival ink and stamp this over the background. Now, a couple of other possibilities. Maybe you would prefer to do white butterflies. So you want to stamp and emboss. Make sure that your reactive ink, because it is water reactive and it does stay wet a little bit longer than a regular ink, make sure your backgrounds are completely dry. You could always hit them with a heat tool. Um, you could let them sit overnight, which is pr probably what I would do um, because I prefer that. And then stamp and emboss. You could stamp and emboss in black in white, in gold, silver, whatever your preferred color is for a completely different look. Oh, look how beautiful these are. They really end up looking like pattern paper backgrounds, which is one of my very favorite things to do is to create my own backgrounds that are completely custom. Now I am spritzing with my favorite white iridescent shimmer from Hero Arts. I absolutely love this product. And it's going to create these beautiful shimmery splatters and splotches all over each background. While that's drying, I'm going to take some butterflies from the beautiful butterflies stamp set also included in this release. All of my stamps today in the video are from the latest release, the My Monthly Hero February release. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use that black archival ink to stamp my butterflies twice. Both cards are going to be exactly the same. They're just going to be in different colorways. I love doing that. I talk about it quite a bit in my videos that while I have products out, I often will create multiples even if they're in different colors or things like that, just because I love being able to have multiple cards in one craft set sitting. 
Once I have my butterfly stamped, I'm going to take the coordinating dies and die cut them. Because I'm going to be doing ink blending for my butterflies, I want to go ahead and die cut them first just so that I'm not wasting a lot of extra paper or getting the ink all over the rest of this white card stock that can be used for another card. I'm gonna line up my butterflies and I'm going to die cut all three of these butterflies with one pass, move the dies to the second set of butterflies and die cut them next. I like using magnetic mats to store my dies so you'll see that that's what I've got there holding the rest of the dies in place. A little repositionable post-it tape works great to hold those down in place while I run them through my die cutting machine. And then you can reuse the post-it tape several times. I'm just going to carefully pop these out. You could also color them with your favorite coloring medium. You could watercolor them using the, re the uh, refills for the reactive inks. If you would like to stamp them maybe on a watercolor cardstock and color them in that way, ink blending is super quick and easy and I'm going to share a few tips for embellishing to make them stand out just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and move our die cutting machine out of the way and I'm going to go back to my glass mat for easy cleanup. I'm going to grab some smaller blending brushes. These are small circular blending brushes from Simon Says Stamp and it's going to help me create a more precision ink blending experience. <laughs> And I'm going to use the exact same three colors and do different combinations of the ink right on the butterflies. I do want to cover up that outer white edge. My cards are not white. Um, there is no white border. I didn't trim down the background. And I really felt because of this, I didn't want that white border from die cutting standing out against the beautiful backgrounds that we just created. So I am going to ink blend clear out to the edge. This is going to create more of a tone on tone pop out effect where the butterflies are going, because we have already have butterflies on the background, they're going to pop out from the background, but still blend in really, really nicely. I'm going to slightly bend each butterfly in half, not too much, but just enough because we will be placing foam adhesive underneath the wings and liquid adhesive underneath the body to secure the body to the card but lift the wings up for that little bit of lift that draws the eye um, from the background to these popped out butterflies. I'm going to just use a different combination for each one. Some will have maybe all three colors, some only two just kind of whatever I thought looked good. I didn't want them all to be exactly the same. So my goal was to just uh, do something a little different on each butterfly. And this, again, small blending brushes, there's lots of different blending brushes out there that are smaller, more precision, are really going to be helpful with this technique. The big blending brushes would probably cover the whole thing, which is fine if you are wanting to just ink or color your butterfly with one color, you could totally do that. I decided to go around the outer edges of this butterfly with some purple, that grape slush. I'm going to clean my mat and we're going to move on to the second color com combination, which again is my lemon drop, creamsicle, and fruit punch. So a little bit more of what I would call the, the warm summer colors and the other card is our cool wintery colors maybe <laughs> uh, even though uh, neither card is really summer or winter we're gonna turn them into a, a birthday card but as always these could be just as easily turned into thank you cards thinking of you cards sympathy cards um any kind of card friendship card hello card I love I love a card that can just have any sort of sentiment on it it is not theme specific at all I love that lemon drop and creamsicle together and then we'll probably do the body there with a little bit of fruit punch to darken it up 
Again, gentle bend. We'll pop some foam adhesive underneath the wings and adhere this to our design. And a little creamsicle, a little fruit punch for this last one. Now, I like to use some foam adhesive squares and liquid adhesive. If you need your butterfly body to be secured to the background, I did not use it today, but I have used it many times in the past. If you have reverse tweezers, once you put the liquid adhesive on the body of the butterfly, go ahead and place your tweezers on the body, body of the butterfly and it's going to help secure that while the glue dries so it doesn't accidentally pop up. Look how pretty these look against the butterfly background. And while I'm securing them, I did go ahead and decide to use some Nouveau Crystal Drops, which I have not used in a hot minute, but I'm loving them for adding some definition to the butterfly bodies and things like that. I'm gonna tell you the colors I'm using. These are all from my stash. I am using navy blue, metallic blue ice and violet galaxy for this first card. Now, I would like to say I have not used these maybe in a year, you guys. I opened up my bottles. I do store them upside down now and all of them worked without having to unclog them. So it might be um, really nice to store these upside down, I think it might make a difference. I used to store them standing up and I, they, I had problems with them clogging. I was so surprised when I opened all of these and I had not an issue. So I'm gonna go back to using these sometimes because I love it. Very, very little bits of the uh, Nuvo Crystal Drops on the card. You can see I'm just adding the teeniest tiny bit. It will dry much quicker because I'm using a very light application instead of a big droplet, but I would highly recommend letting this sit for, I think the recommended time is 24 hours before placing it in, in an envelope to give or send, but I would probably give it a little bit more than that. I usually give it more like 48 hours at least before trying to pop it in an envelope. Let's go ahead and do the second card. Same thing. I'm going to follow the exact same design. I do want to mention, I forgot to mention this with the other card. You will notice that I am placing my butterflies over existing butterflies on the background. So it almost appears like these are popping up from the background. So instead of offsetting it, I'm completely covering up and open butterfly, more of the um, outline butterfly rather than the solids. Here is another color combination and I didn't have any trouble with these either. I'm using red berry, ripened pumpkin, and dandelion yellow. Very, very bright and colorful. And we're going to do the exact same thing. I am going to set these aside to completely dry while I work on creating the coordinating envelope and some sentiments for our finished card. So super simple embellishing, but effective and so, so pretty. After cleaning the same butterfly images that I used for popping out on the card, I am going to place them in a misty all in a row, I've got some white envelopes here and along the left side of the envelope, I'm going to ink up my butterflies with all three colors of ink. I'm just kind of tapping it on in different areas and then stamping it. And I can reevaluate, that's not the best stamped impression. So I'm gonna go back and just add in a little extra ink here and there. Very simple, a very simple envelope, but I love coordinating envelopes. I love addressing them. I love receiving them. And I think that while you have the supplies out, if you can create something super simple like this, it really does give a beautiful presentation. I'm going to go ahead and clean the stamps again and do the same thing with my other ink combination to match the card. Once we have our envelopes completely stamped, it's time to do a sentiment. And I have a couple of different stamp sets from the release here. 
We are going to be using a very small happy birthday sentiment from the Monarch and Milkweed stamp set. Um, this is a beautiful stamp set. It has lots of beautiful greetings and images in it, but I am just using the happy birthday. So you might already have a happy birthday in your stash that you can use. Um, I'm going to prep some of the pitch black Hero Arts cardstock with a powder tool. I'm going to stamp my greetings with the embossing and watermark ink. I'm just going to stamp it on one end of the pitch black cardstock, flip it around and stamp it again. We're going to heat emboss with white embossing powder and then die cut with the Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Labels die. If you don't have a label die, you can always use your paper trimmer to die cut your greetings into sentiment strips. The bold white on the black cardstock I think is going to look really nice and it's going to stand out. So even though I am adding some white here with my embossed greeting, the sentiment strip itself is black. Um, the white is really going to pop and you want your sentiment to show up, especially in the case of this card where our sentiment is super small, but I think it's very effective. So don't be afraid to use those smaller sentiments. I don't do this very often, but with this particular card design, I just felt like it worked great. So next, make sure you buff away any remaining powder on your cardstock. And I'm going to show you how I die cut my sentiment labels. I love a good sentiment label. I line it up with one side, die cut it. Then I flip my greeting around, line up the other side, and I just roll it through enough to pop that second side of the sentiment strip before pulling it out. I am going to do this for both. We're going to take some foam adhesive and pop these right in the upper like third of the card underneath the wing of one of the butterflies. And this gives you a perfectly cut sentiment strip. You could just trim the other end with scissors if you wanted to. This is me being um, a little extra. So here's our backgrounds. Look how beautiful they are. The Nouveau Crystal Drops do add a nice little touch to those popped up butterflies. And I think the little birthday greetings here are just gonna look so cute. Oh, and the white is really showy against that background, but the black of the cardstock blends in beautifully, which is exactly the look I was going for. I feel like we need to add a little something to the inside of the card. I'm going to straighten that sentiment just a tiny little bit. On the inside, I decided to take a greeting from another stamp set from the release, The Morning Glory Messages, and I'm going to stamp the phrase, enjoy every moment. We're going to pick one of the ink colors that we used on the front of the card to stamp that. I've been trying to include something inside of my cards this year. I think it gives it a more polished, finished look, um, even if it's something as simple as this. We're going to attach our panels then to the front of each of our cards. I always like to take a bone folder and make sure the crease is nice. And here is a look at both of the finished card designs. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these beautiful butterfly backgrounds featuring products from the Hero Arts February 2023 release. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There's exclusive content. You'll receive a handmade birthday card from me during your birthday month, monthly lives for my top tier patrons, and more, 
we would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're always notified when I have a video or go live. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you again next time.